walkthrough of how to use decision nodes with Analysis Skill Kits Tool Editor. Now, decision nodes are a way for you to establish some logic when determining which tools should be run. Um, to use this functionality, we'll be going straight into the tool editor. However, I do want to just lay out the use case we'll be doing, um, where we are currently working with a custom skill that takes in a summary of the user's current tasks alongside a list of their goals, and then essentially gives us a progress report on how they're doing. Now, in order to complete this custom skill, we need to get a list of the user's tasks. So let's go into the tool editor to see what we can do. So we already have the custom skill. We're actually going out and getting the goals. But we're going to add a tool node in parallel that's just a flow action called get user tasks FA for flow action. And we conveniently have that flow action there. For this flow action to work, we need to pass in this ID of the user. And we will just truncate the output to make sure we don't go over our token limits. And then for tool conditions, we want this to always run in this scenario. So we put add tool. Now, in this scenario, we might actually have another option where in case this flow action is searching within the wrong tables, perhaps it's reaching out to an API. So you want to add in another tool, which is almost like a backup, which is actually conveniently another skill called get tasks. And we'll just call it skill. So we remember in this one, we have L analyze current incident trends, which actually essentially summarizes all the tasks that are assigned to a user and click continue. And again, pass in the information and go through this process of adding in the tool. Now that we have this, in this, in this scenario, perhaps if we get an output from this flow action, we don't actually need to make another LLM call to run this skill here because we already have our list of user tasks. So what we're going to be doing is actually adding in a decision node at this point to say, hey, based on these conditions, we can actually bypass that get task skill tool. So first thing we need to do is give it a name, which we're going to call skip skill call. And we have to add in a branch. This new branch is going to be skip if flow action complete. And destination node is essentially what happens when these the conditions for, for this branch evaluates to true. And in our case, basically what we want to do is just skip. We want to bypass that get task skill. So we're going to say, okay, we just want to jump to the end here and go directly into the skill prompt. Down here is where we evaluate the actual branch conditions. So you can do either directly saying, using the output from a tool to say, okay, if, you know, we can even use like action status of the flow action is a particular value and do it that way. However, I also want to show off um, just the script block because this is what I believe most of you will be do using in this scenario. Where within the script block, what you can do is essentially just say like, okay, you get the context variable and this is essentially an object that holds the response from the JSON um, response from the previous tool. And in our case, we say we use this object dot get value. And then in this um, block here, basically the key for this is we put in the name of that tool that we just um, used, which is that get user tasks flow action dot whatever that attribute name is that you're evaluating against. Now, in our scenario, what we want to do is say, if we got literally anything back from that flow action, that will be like in that tasks list, then that means that it runs successfully. And so we don't actually need to run that custom skill. So the way that I do that, I extract that from the JSON, I trim it, and then I just check to see, okay, 
is the length of this zero? Because what trim does is it just removes white space on either side at the beginning and the end of that string value that we get back. And then I check for the length of that. If it's zero, it just means that it's an empty string. Nothing was actually returned. In which case, we want to return false because we still want to run that custom skill. But in our case, if it is um, if it actually doesn't have a value, then we um, need to go ahead and run that skill. But if it does, then we don't need to, and we can actually just return true. And this will mean that we'll go directly to the skill prompt destination node, which is that final, um, the actual prompt for the goal progress tracker. Now, this is important to note that we have a default branch here, so you can define multiple branches. You can say if it contains this, use this tool. If it, the output contains that, go to this other node. You can do that for as many branches as you want, but you will have to define a default branch, which essentially means if none of them, uh, none of the branches return true, then you need to just use this default branch, which in our case, let's say if it, this one evaluates or false, we do always want to have a list of tasks provided. So we're going to say, yeah, go the normal pathway that we had originally of getting using that custom skill. So I click add and the diagram will update. And you can see our new branch here where basically we have the decision node up here that say, ask that question of like, okay, if we get a response from here, then we don't need to call that other one and we can kind of skip that. If the um, output of the script is false. That means we didn't get any information back from here. And so we need to continue down on the default branch to call this custom skill and make that LLM call. Returning to the prompt editor, just to give you guys a walkthrough of what this looks like and how to troubleshoot it as well. We get a response back and we can see that we get the model output here we get our tools, which we can go through and look at the output for those tools. But most importantly, if we go into tool editor, you can actually see, okay, was this um, skill actually jumped or not? So I think if we click on this, we can see, okay, the tool has skipped the execution as it has a condition on it, which evaluated to false. So we can see that in this chart scenario, this decision was made to go beep, 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 and just skip by it. Now sharp-eyed folk will notice that I didn't actually add in the output from our tool. And in this scenario, we, we have potentially have two responses. I'm actually just going to add them both in because only one will actually return a value for us. So we can return them both within this context of the prompt and if we run it again. Awesome. And we scroll down. We now have our response with all the tasks prompt generated. So I hope this was helpful. Um, have a good rest of your day.